as I've seen a lot of you guys before, my, my name is Rich Ortiz. Um, so the bottom line, I've been thinking a lot about, well, you know, what am I going to talk about in today's seminar? Because I know a lot of you guys have seen me before. And we've gone over pretty much everything there is to go over. But one thing I was thinking about, which is really kind of the, a concept, is with everything, with everything we're, we're doing today in our, in our daily lives, everything we're doing is, that's okay, basically everything we're doing is in real time. We got, you know, we got our cell phones, we got online, every, everything's in real time. And the way, the way I, I, I've always thought about ice fishing was in real time. So what I think happens with a lot of us ice fishermen is we get stuck doing the same thing every time we go fishing. And fishermen don't get enough credit. I, I really believe that fishermen are biologists, they're meteorologists, they're scientists, they, you, you're angling and you're putting together all these clues every day, every day is a new day, every, every time you go out fishing, you really got to have your mindset on what is today going to bring to the table, what, what, are we, what are we doing today? And I think one of the biggest things that we do as ice fishermen is get stuck in a rut of, all right, I got my tip-ups, I got my hooks, I, got my, I bought my shiner, so I'm going to go out and set up in my spot where I caught that pike 10 years ago. You know what I mean? And we do that, and I'm guilty of doing it as a tip-up fisherman, but we do that, and I think it's important to kind of get your head on thinking about the moment, you know, that you're fishing and, and what the weather's doing, what the fish are doing. Does everybody pretty much have fish finders nowadays? It's pretty much like a standard ice fishing deal now. So I use, and I, I'm not a, I don't, one thing about me, guys, is I'm not, I don't have anything I'm selling. I, I'm not selling Garmin or, or Lowrance or I'm just here to talk fishing. Really, that's about it. So what I'm, what I'm saying is um, I use, um, I use sonar, flasher, and GPS in combination. So I don't, I don't just use a flasher. I, I use a sonar and a flasher and a GPS. And I use all those things because as what I think we're here for is catching trophy fish, right? That's what we want to do. And I think what I use that for is to put, um, put together all the clues that I can with the sonar. I really, I get a better idea of what I'm looking at for as far as bait fish goes, what I'm looking at as far as, um, for me, it just, I have, a, I just have a better understanding of sonar for me when I'm, when it comes down to catching bigger fish. So with all that said, it's really important to, to basically go out every day with a fresh head and really, and really look at the clues that you're given on a daily basis when it comes to fishing. Um, I started ice fishing when I was five with my grandfather and then I was about eight years old and I was fishing by myself and I put a lot, a lot of time in on targeting, you know, every species I could possibly target. So, I mean, as far as I'm, I'm a musician, so I have the ability to spend four or five, five days a week fishing and that's given me a lot of time on the ice and a lot, I've learned a lot of cool experiences, but I mean, I think it's just a matter of putting the time in, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is look at the clues that you're given that day when it comes to targeting fish. For me, um, Lake George in particular, um, there, there's a, there's a ton of, there's a, there's a ton of very similar spots that hold big fish on the lake. And you're, you know, you're looking for what I like to call is like early season. I look for edges. So basically I'm looking at for my bigger fish, I'm looking outside of just outside of perch beds on the on the farthest edge of the of the perch grass. Kind of Lake George is really unique in the sense that when we think of big pike or lake trout or mostly let's just talk about pike. We think about big pike, we think of big pike cruising in shallow bays and eight feet of water. And in Lake George, you're catching your big pike just just where the where the bait is, and that's in 36 to 40 four foot of water. That's where you're catching all your, all your good fish. And I, when I, we can talk about lake trout and salmon after, but for, for pike, that's where I start. Um, I'm one of those guys that, you know, I kind of look at what the fish are feeding on and try to target target the big fish that way. I look at pike as, or big predator fish, just as you would look at a big buck when you're trying to hunt a big deer. Um, they're not everywhere. So you got, first of all, find some big fish. 
and you got to you got to be you can't go to the same spot and expect to catch you know and hammer them. They're they're I believe that they're pretty intelligent, you know, and they're and they're 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 on to you after you catch a few big fish, I believe. So what I what I generally do is I'll fish outside of the the perch beds on Lake George. I'll use um, I usually start off with using um, I'll set my five five tip ups. What I've been using for the pike, which I really like. Um, are, are these are these polar magnum tip ups? Um, they're really really cool. The only issue that I've ever had with them is um, when you go ahead and you put your tip up down, you got to make sure that none of this uh, gets wet and you don't get any snow in the end of these because they'll freeze up. And that's that's the only issue I've ever found with them. But they're really really good really good for uh, for big fish. You can put a lot of line on it. Your that hole cover really helps. Um, protect the, the, if you have, so Lake George is super clear as you were talking about in your last seminar. Um, so presentation is so key in Lake George. You have to be, I use 17 pound when I, when I use my leaders, it's always 17 pound fluorocarbon. I've held it. I used to use 12 pound mono, uh, Berkeley XT, and I've held them the mono up to the 17 pound vanish and the 17 pound vanish is, is actually, is actually thinner and it's actually um you can't see it so i switched to 17 pound vanish a few years ago and with lake george it makes a huge difference another thing that people don't think about which i i i fish a lot with uh, uh some good friends of mine and they'll have tip up line on lake george that's not uh that's like green or or the beige or the white or or, or yellow black black line you will i don't know what it is but you know they do not see it they they don't see it as well You'll get more fish on a black with your black backing on Lake George because it's so the it's it's all about finesse on Lake George. Um, I'm always I'm always experimenting with uh, with my sonar to find to find uh, the bait. Normally, um, Lake George has three primary. You know, they're they're either eat the the the, the trophy fish are either eating smelt. Um, panfish or or ciscos most of the time so lake george um it's not legal to use smelt this year um there's been a lot of talk about that the um dc has basically has has it in the works for maybe the next regulation the next regulation book that comes out you'll be able to use smelt for bait natural bait so obviously if you you can find the natural bait in the lake and use that. You're doing really well. Um, I use, I do target uh, a lot of my my bigger fish. I do catch on on big dead suckers or or um, big ciscos or anything I can I can use to uh, the the bigger presentation I can put on a tip up the better for a lot of those big northerns because you what ends up happening is you'll catch you know you'll catch a pickerel or a bass or and i i don't like to I, i'd rather just sit there and let the let the tip up you know stay down uh, than mess with a smaller fish because i'm i'm into i want to catch i want to catch a trophy pike that's what that's that's what i love to do so one thing that's kind of non-traditional with me is i'll use um I'll, so i'm fishing for pike i'm using 17 pound fluorocarbon and i'm also using uh um, size size 12 treble hooks because I'm on uh, and what happens with these small treble hooks and these big pike is everyone's like well pike cut your line pike cut your line if you have your if you have that small hook and the pike closes his mouth I personally have never lost and I've caught I don't know I was I was trying to probably like 20 fish in the 20 pound range and a handful that are in 20 22 to 26 pounds in my life and i've never ever not had that hook in the very corner of their mouth with no with no issue whatsoever the smaller fish will you'll you'll uh the pickerel will potentially break your line but not a big these are size 12 yeah um just enough to get the hook into the back of the dorsal fin and, and clear the clear the bone there is, is all i need um and that's just that's not lakers that's that's pike that's how i that's how i fish pike lakers are a little different um when i'm when i'm uh, i'm always just uh it starts off usually generally you know 
first ice or first light my tip ups are usually four feet off the weed bottom and as the day goes on I, I do drop the tip ups closer to the right uh, above the weeds you never want obviously you never want your bait in the weeds even with dead bait you never want your dead bait sitting in the weeds you always want it just suspended off that so um one mistake guys make is they they'll use their finders and um to to set their tip ups these days I'm still a I'm still an advocate of using a, a, a sounder because you really want to feel that bottom. You really want to understand it to touch, and I want to feel that I want to feel that sounder just pop out of the weeds, and then I want and that's how I want to set my tip ups. Um, when it comes to lake trout, lake trout are um, they're all over the water column. It's all my. My general rule of thumb is early in the morning, it seems like I'll catch a lot of the bigger lake trout in the bays right off the bat. And if I'm targeting lake trout, I will, I will, I'll be nomadic. Like uh, if you were here for, for Nathan, I'll, I'll go all over. And if I still want to have um, a really good system is these, these Arctic warriors, these, uh, these dead stick tip up setups, they're awesome especially in combination if you're jigging lakers if you can have a dead bait four or five feet off and you see these lake trout come in and you're working your jigs and you try a few jigs and they're not hitting the next thing you know they smack the they, they'll smack the dead bait so it's nice to sometimes have that two combo uh, it's a little a little bit of a it lures in some fish for you a lot of times same thing uh with your big with your pike tip ups when you're fishing these pike tip ups and you have your tip ups. I spread my tip ups out as far as I can across the bay. As far as I can work these tip ups, it's a it's a really big lake. Most guys are perch fishing. Not too many guys mind if you run some some pike tip ups through their setup. So I'll I'll take up as a lot of water column and I'll start to find these bigger fish. And as I'm if I'm just strictly targeting pike, I will work holes near my tip ups with big spoons or big rattle baits lindy darters such like that to kind of draw in fish um which is i've had a lot of success doing that and you will early in the morning catch them on jig sticks which is a lot of fun too obviously it's it's always fun to catch a, a big fish on a jig stick um i'm throwing a lot of info at at you um you let's stop for a minute and take some questions all right is there an advantage to using dead bait versus live? Um, at times. So the advantage is, the first one that comes to mind is when you get a flag, if, if you've set it properly, you know it's a fish, you know, as long as it's not a wind flag, which hopefully everyone thinks of that before they set their tip ups. But so the advantage is A, you know, you got, you know, you got a fish, A. B, um, certain times a year, fish are lethargic and they're it's they're looking for an easy meal um dead bait always seems to work really really good for me um mid to late season especially late season and generally as the season if you do have the ice if you are fishing late season you are going to have to start to think about spawning fish you are going to have to kind of transition to to where these 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 fish are staging up to spawn. It's not too often that it's warm enough that you're really fishing spawning pike in shallow water in Lake George where the ice is safe. It does happen. Um, but that pre-spawn, that pre-spawn pike in, they're going to be in that 36 feet of water. And they, they actually, um, they actually seem to be like rather the the bigger fish seem to be territorial to me in my experience i seem to find that a big fish will cover one area like it seems uh in my experience so when i catch a a really big pike in that area i won't get stuck on that spot for maybe the next week i'll try another spot with the same scenario and i'll fish there and try to catch a bigger fish there um Kind of like when you're deer hunting, you're not going to deer hunt that same deer and it's, you know, go to his bedroom every day and try to, and try to, try to get him. So I move around a lot. And as I build, as I build these spots, I do go back. I say, all right, well, geez, we caught, you know, five, 
20 pound fish in the past 15 years, you'll start there, you know, but so, but then you do have to explore. And once you build an arsenal of spots, you will start to have a, a good repertoire of big fish. So, but that's that. Second part of my question. If you are using live bait, how do you gauge how tight to set your drag? On the tip ups. Yeah. So the, these tip ups are, you can get really, really precise on, on your magnet control because you can slide that spool up and down. See, so as far as the trigger, so you can put a heavier bait on it. And then also you do have a drag on the side. So I'm saying, what's a general though? I mean, for me, I'll fish feel any kind of resistance or generally, no, a big pike. I mean, yes, initially there's, they're smashing it. Yeah. So generally with big pike, no, generally, I still like to set mine as if they do. So I kind of just, I kind of get it to where my bait is not triggering. And then, um, and then I keep it there. As far as my drag, I don't really mess with my drag too much. Um, I just don't want it to backlash because obviously these fish, they're going to run. Um, one thing we should also talk about is how to set the hook using this setup, um, which we haven't done yet, which is very particular way. Um, but yeah, so that's how I do it. I just don't want my line to backlash. I don't want to have my line spool back when they run. And I want to have it so that my bait is just, you know, just on the edge of triggering the tip up. Um, the, uh, the thing about those small hooks is you're not yank, you're not, you don't want to yank your line. You literally just want to pull the fish back in. Um, there's the whole, uh, there's the whole, you know, the, the two run that everyone says, you know, pike take two runs. I, I don't believe that. I, I generally believe that you don't have a bait big enough that generally if, if a big pike hits it, he hasn't swallowed it on the first, on the first bite. Um, unless they're really, really finicky and they might hold on to it. But 80% of the time when I get a flag and I have a 12 inch bait, what I'm looking at is that spool. And I can almost, if you see that spool, just kind of, you can kind of tell they're just working on the bait and they're, they don't really know what they're doing. But if you see that spool going steady and, and you, I, I general pick up my tip up and I'll just kind of put my hand on the line and feel it. And you can almost feel when they're just, they're just shaking at it or you can, when you, but generally they have it, especially with the bigger fish. And I give it to them then. And I don't, I just kind of pull back on it. I don't yank on it what happens with those big fish is they'll they'll find a way to to get you in the weeds they'll find a way to get you wrapped around something and you'll you end up losing more fish and saying why didn't i just set the hook when i when i had the chance just any other questions on anything rich probably can't be anything done about it but in the recent years i've lost three pike in second dig i, I know they're pike i saw them and got them in the hole snap me off with the barrel swivel using everything you know how are you tying how are you tying your barrel, sw barrel swivel you know what kind of knot you mean this the barrel swivel snapped or the actual line the line is snapped off of the barrel swivel the fish isn't biting that's because you're not um your your line is uh, slipping you're not um you're not tying the right knot probably i would guess are you how will clinch so i mean essentially that would work um you must have had some really big fish <laughs> i've had issues with bearings myself and I, I stopped using barrel swivel i go to the bearing style yeah that's what i use yeah the barrel i mean the the barrels that are just the eel claw brand yeah yeah cheap is. i've had them pull right out yeah they're the cheap barrel, yeah but he's talking about so line slippage line, line breakage line breakage snaps off so you, the the knot is still on the barrel on the swivel, but the but the line broke there. Correct. I mean, you got to you got to ask yourself. Uh, you got to. There's a couple things. I mean, either there's a lot of ice there, and you're you got that fish at the hole, and he's catching an edge on on the you know as you're trying to get a get him up to the hole. He's either catching the edge, a or or you're. Uh, you're nicking your, your line somewhere, you know, you got to watch, you got to, I change my leader. I touch my leader every time, you know, you got to, you got to feel that leader every single time. But, um, 
With Sack and Daga, it doesn't hurt to go heavier line because it's 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 not super super duper clear. Go with a what a thirty pound test or just something that's if you're using live bait, you want to be able to your bait wants to be you want to be able to have your bait to be natural. So you don't want line that's that's not f uh, flexible enough to make your bait present naturally. You know, that's my thing. I, and then plus, what happens if you have a really stiff line is it they end up somehow twisting your line up around your tip up and it just uh, it ends up being more problems for me that's if you're using a dead bait fine use you know what i mean that's that would be my suggestion on that all three of these were were live bait large shiners or baby suckers and um they grab them the flag goes flying a couple of cases the tip up left the ice and uh go and let them run slow them down a little bit Stop, you're getting me excited. <laughs> <laughs> you want to really get excited? I got a story for you. I caught one on a jig and pole. I just very gently took it, didn't even know what I had. I got it up to the hole, could see it, and he started to run, so I let him go. Got him back to the hole, got him half, well, not halfway out of the hole. He flared his gills, stuck himself in the hole. Shook the hook out. He was gone. Uh, I didn't even have time to grab the gap. Yeah. He was gone. Now, what's the big deal about getting his gill stuck in the hole? It was an eight-inch hole. Oh, nice. That was one hell of a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I caught a 26-pounder through a 7-inch hole. That's what I use, 7-inch hole. I, I actually, I'm one of these guys that I, my mentality on fishing is I approach it like I'm going into their, like I do deer hunting. I'm going into their bedroom. I want to go in. I want to go in as finesse as possible. I don't want to make a ton of noise. I have an electric auger, but I, I don't want to carry that thing around early ice. So I always use my seven inch hand auger. Seven inches. I haven't been able to get a fish out of that out from that hole yet. And I had one that was, I literally had, you know, they, they squeeze out. But, um, with gaffing, I always throw my fish back. So with gaffing, I, I'm really careful to, to just gaff them right. You know, you want to be careful because there is a major uh, vein arter, artery or I don't know. Oh, is there right? Yeah, right underneath. Yeah, so you got to be Where? careful. Yeah, just try to get them soft, you know, in in the uh, cartilage. Well, this was in a keeper tournament. so Yeah, yeah. You know, by the time you turn them in and all. I know, yeah. So I can go on forever about it, but... So that's that's how I fish pike with tip ups. Anybody else want to? Okay, add? Two questions. Um, what length on your leader line? Oh yeah, I I mean, with Lake George, I'm using three four foot leader. You know. Okay. The second, what about uh, using perch? Using perch for bait? I I don't. Um, I for walleye I used to. Um, I don't for pike. I just I I, I never had any luck. I've tried it, you know. That's what I'm asking. I grew up trying it. My buddy got a 15 pounder on a perch. Yeah, I grew up. I mean, I th I think uh, I think I caught a nice one on Scroon Lake doing it. I I don't think I've had too much luck on Lake George with it because there's better uh, there is better choices on Lake George. Yeah. That's what I was just curious. Well, you just mentioned another part of so I you wouldn't know this either. You said that you release, so you're not really cutting both and see what the feed. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You have a question? No. no. Um, so, what is your preferred bait? My preferred bait is biggest dead bait I can I can get my hands on. Honestly, whatever it is, if they've got, um, if I can, if I can, which I try not to talk about it too much because it it just they're hard to target and, but if I can catch big ciscos through the ice and jig them up and use them that day, that's that's about as good as it gets you um big 12 inch yeah a big as, as big as you can get on your tip up without <laughs> without it breaking <laughs> um what, big suckers like that big right? suckers yeah didn't have any for the i'll never forget i mean when i was when i was about 18 years old i used to go to uh what's up guys i used to go to um I came in and I, I didn't have a lot of money and I went to I went to Jeff. What's up, Josh? I went uh, and I I I bought this. You know, I try to buy the biggest bait I can get, biggest dead bait I can find. I'll, you know, that's my deal. But he generally 
it's hard to harder to find bigger bait these days. So if you can catch if you can catch legal big bait, then that's the way to do it. Well, it's legal to catch them on any body you're fishing except for like Jordan. Yeah, with yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how I that's how I always roll. I'm sure Jeff doesn't want me to, you know, well, promote that, but that is how I do it. How many guys walk into a bait store and say, I want to buy all your dead baits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any, anybody else have any questions? Hey, guys. How are you? And really, you're down here. We're up there wandering. Oh, yeah. We were talking about, we were talking about targeting pike and the presentation on Lake George. We were getting sp specific on Lake George and how um, Lake George is such a clear body of water. And we were quickly talked about how I, I use uh, super small trebles on the big pike with 17 pound uh, fluorocarbon on my tip ups because I the, the smaller hook gets caught in the corner of their mouth and I don't have any real problems with them breaking the line and talk about bait and when you rig when you rig uh, uh, the bait is there a difference whether it's live or dead um. How I how I rig it? Yeah, is it, is it under the dorsal every time or? Yeah, yeah. yep, pretty much. I'll tell you some. I'll tell you some tricks I have with live bait though, with my bigger live bait, which is it's kind of you know it's it's the bigger live bait. That, that small treble seems to probably wear out and pull out after a while. That bait working. It. Yeah, you got to be careful. But the trebles are pretty good when you get a good barb, you know, a good barb in it. But you definitely have to you definitely have to clear that that you know, that, that meat that you're going through, you can't just, you know, stick it three quarters in, you got to get it through. Uh, um, here's some tricks with some big dead bait or some big live bait. Um, and I learned this from tarpon fishing down in Florida. You, if you, and this is probably not super ethical, but what you do is if you, if you, uh, if you blind that fish, it'll absolutely go crazy um and and spinning around for big pike it's just a just a little trick that's definitely definitely works but you have to use a weight when you do that because they're going to be trying to get up um and i learned that from tarpon guides and i just was like oh my god the, you know the bait just starts spinning around on top of the water and fish go crazy so yeah wound wound your bait um take a fin off T take if you if you're having Bait flags, take that. You won't get bait flags, honestly, with these magnum pullers if you if you use them the right way. I'm excited about the salmon on Lake George. I fished this fall and I caught three salmon in uh, like the seven to nine pound range, and I saw a lot more. And I think that ice fishing for salmon on Lake George is going to be a lot of fun. I can tell you a little bit about that. Sh the strain of salmon that they put in the lake is very unique it's not the i've learned a lot quickly on these on these salmon they're not the same salmon that we used to catch where we had our tip-ups you know where our bait was bouncing off underneath the ice these fish are um these fish are like they like the bait like seven to ten feet down and they're they're they're, they're up striking on the bait so i was doing really good past couple of years lower than normal you know, then my, cause typically I was right under the ice with my minnows. So I dropped my minnows maybe five to seven, eight feet. And I've been doing a lot better on the salmon on, on the lake. And I use, uh, I always use fluorocarbon on Lake George. Pretty much. Um, <coughs> mostly hunts for salmon. Yeah. Um, I really, I like hunts. Uh, one interesting thing about bait is if you're going to be fishing, like hunts will tend, you got to be really careful with how you set hunts because they'll tend to spin, wrap your line like almost like a smelt would. They'll tend to wrap their your leader around your around your uh, backing. So you just have to really be um, cautious of of how you uh, how much weight you use because you don't want that fish getting up over your over your leader. Enough weight. Enough weight. I I personally baby. like I like baby suckers. Okay. Um, Even suspended. Yeah, because they're gonna they're gonna try to they're gonna be you know they'll try to work. Down. You're not gonna have any problems with them. Right. Um, another really uh, successful bait for me, which is like I can't even believe I'm telling you, is rosy reds. They're they're awesome salmon baits. I I I've always done better with that bright colors uh, for salmon on the lake. I use when I'm fishing for salmon. Most of the time, I'm using something bright. You know, it's a, a bead. 
a red bead. Typically, I barely have any backing in the water. All my holes are covered. I never have any ambient light shining. The lake is so clear. With Lake George, you know how you have all those pressure ridges and you have the... It, I, they're so nomadic, the salmon, you know, a lot of times. And they're, they're traveling in these big schools. I look at those pressure ridges as structure for them, underwater structure and, and shoreline. So I'm fishing those pressure ridges, the edges of those pressure ridges and, and the shore for most of the time. Unless I somehow target some really good bait and the salmon are in that general area, I'll fish that way. But that's been my success on salmon. But they are a different strain of salmon. They're they're not, you know, they're uh, pretty unique. Is they're, six, six pound weight enough? I think that's perfect. Yeah, I think six pound is perfect. And size twelve trebles, you think? Even small, even smaller, fourteen, sixteen. The, yeah, I think you're all right with that. Um, I was saying, you know, think in real time. Uh, Fishermen get stuck in, in ruts doing the same thing over and over again. One of the biggest things is to just really figure out what's working that day. And, and, and that, that was kind of something that really hit me coming to the seminar because I know a lot of you guys have heard me talk about all this stuff already. So it was, But the, another really cool thing um, with all the time I've spent doing it, I, I swear by the solar lunar charts. I think you guys should download some solar lunar charts into your phone. Um, I'm an avid deer hunter. You look at your trail camera pictures. You you, you watch your movement during the day. You see all you see the action. You that's it's right in line with your major lunar or major and minor solar lunar charts. It's something that you should just if you don't have a lot a lot of time to fish, and you know you're gonna well I could go this day I could go that day I could I only have a couple hours when am I gonna go use that solar lunar charts it works. Our local gun shop. I stopped and get a calendar and I asked him. I said, you don't have the Tables in here. He goes, you don't believe in that, do you? I said, absolutely. Yeah, it's it definitely works. And I'm like, you own an outdoors type store. You should. When I was a kid, I always used to say it was like when the when the moon rose during the day, and I could see it, and I could see it uh, get to its highest point. I used to always tell guys, we, we watch the the crescent moon during the day, and you'd see it come up, and the flags would start flying, and I and I would just tell that was that's all I knew at that point. I was like, that moon just set, and now the fish are biting. And that's that. And now you know. Now with these solar lunar charts, and you and you get the moon and zenith, and the sun and zenith, and uh, and you get all these. It, you, it's pretty. Definitely works. Do you watch the barometer? Yeah, I mean, I could tell you another really good tip on Lake George is a lot of guys will say like you, you said it earlier, like the day before a, a, a falling barometer or storm, low pressure. I think it's two days before. I honestly do. I think it's two days before on Lake George. That's just what I've I, I've I've always done better two days before. When you say a bead, do you have that on your leader line? Or you have yeah, yep. Above your bait, at yep. twelve inches. Yeah, like yeah. Like uh, what say above your sinker? Okay, above the sinker. Yeah, just a sliding bead. Okay. Yep. Neat. Yep. Um, Look it through so you can slide it up or down. Too. Yeah, that, yeah, just that's just a yep. Yeah. Um, experiment with hook colors, uh, red, neon, yellow, try them, try them. Uh, lake trout with hook size. I always have to up my hook size. I don't use, two, I'll, I'll even use like fours. I think I brought a package. I'll use sixes or fours, you know, just a bigger hook. So you're using the biggest bait you can find? Or? I think the, uh, the hook set is different on lake trout. They bite, they bite and feed it. They, they're not like pike. Pike will just... There used to be that old thing with the pike. They'd say that the bike has to hit the bait, then he turns it around in his mouth, and he swims, and that's how he gets the bait down. And always, always, always get him on the second run. I don't think that's pike at all. If anything, that's lake trout. That's what lake trout do. And I was always told by elders that that's what the pike did. I don't, from what what I can tell is, if a big pike hits that thing, he swallowed it in one bite, just done. So when your salmon, when you expect your salmon to hit, and you get to the spool and it's running, do you stop it? Yeah, what are you doing? Because now you got a variable. So say you're on shore, you, that salmon's probably running for somewhere where it can get down in the rocks and, and break your line. Right. It's, salmon or the he knows he's hooked. He knows he's hooked. If he's running really hard, he knows he's hooked. He's on there. Do you do you stop him real hard? Try not to. Generally, when that line is running. How many times have you been able to touch your backing and just the fish is right there? A few times, 
but generally you stop them and it's like it's the line still going because they've made a giant circle or they've done whatever they've done so depending on depending on what you're doing those salmon if you do see your, if you are if you do see your line spinning like crazy generally he knows he's got a hook in him because i another thing with those salmon is they'll play with they will kill your bait they will play with your bait they'll come by smack it kill it if you if you have salmon on you have a flag i i could not i could not tell you more if you're going to salmon fish you need to use something with it with an indicator before you take your line out so this this tip up right here with that this is what i use for my salmon sets and and that right there when that's when that's spinning i don't have to go take it out of the hole i don't have to do nothing if that's not spinning though i'm not going to pull that tip up out when if that flag just went up and it's not spinning and i'm and i go and and i could maybe peek under my 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 cover and i could see my bait still there i'll tiptoe backwards and just sit there for about five ten minutes because nine times out of a ten that sam will come back and just and just take the bait and like you said when you see it running that's that's usually when he knows he's hooked but they will play and play and play and play games with you you'll get flags all day long and you're like come on these aren't even what are these smelt you know what i mean but they are salmon and that's how the, that's how it rolls with them sometimes anybody going back to the dead bait with the using the large suckers yeah and the 12 uh, size hook yeah how would you hook them their skin is so thin um i would think it would it so rip right through. no i mean uh so that uh right where that um dorsal fin meets they're like kind of like they're uh there's that little tough part uh there's that little tough cartilage part right above like just below the where the dorsal meets the the back of the fish okay have you ever felt that where you kind of get it in it's like hard to pop it in it's almost like you know like your ear cartilage it's a tough spot on that back you just pop it right through there and just yeah one on but not too high because then you're going to slip it right through the dorsal fin so when you say dead bait on the bottom do you give an extra two feet or no on the bottom with no the sinker or no no a a no sinker with dead bait okay as a matter of fact on lake george when I'm using dead bait, I'm taking the air bladder, I'm popping the air bladder, and I'm presenting the bait as if it were alive, suspended, okay. All right. perfectly suspended off the weed, off uh, the top of the weeds. I'm never sitting a bait in the weeds. Okay. How are you suspending it horizontally? Just like I said, in that, bait, just in that, one spot. In that back, yep, and you want to look, you drop your bait in, you're making sure it sinks. And you're looking at the bait, and it's just, it's suspended as if it were alive. And that's enough to keep the sucker spine straight. Yeah, it'll just sit there. I thought it'd droop on me. That's why I'm asking. Well, maybe it'll droop a little bit, but generally it won't. If it, you know what I mean, if, unless it's you know. You probably covered been, it before we sat down, but de optimum depth. Are you looking? It doesn't matter where the weed line is. Lake George. I'm looking for most of the season, except for late season. Your big pike are generally in off your on the edges of your perch grass often somewhere between 36 and 44 feet of water um and the cool thing about lake george is you're going to catch lake trout in that same depth and a lot of times early in the morning you're going to catch big lake trout in that same depth i've had a lot of really good good luck on you know 12 15 pound lakers in sh in that shallow in those weeds in the morning you know late in the afternoon, yeah late in the afternoon yeah deep water Deep water lake trout is like a whole nother, a whole nother seminar, which I, you could go on forever. But that, I've really gotten some really good techniques for that. Um, if I'm using dead bait on those, and I have a big spool with a ton of line on it, I'll almost drop shot my bait. So I have a, I have a, a one ounce or one and a half ounce lead uh, underneath a, underneath my. So it's essentially drop shot the bait like you would a bass like your bass fishing and i will just um I'll, I'll set the tip up up with the drop shot drop it down the hole it'll it'll spool freely down 150 feet of water and on its own you don't have to sit there and drop your line down and you just you set it you go you go to the next one drop it drop it drop it drop then you go back around when all the spools have stopped you just set your tip up and you walk away which makes fishing that depth a lot e a lot easier most guys are sitting there you know trying to get 150 feet of water they're like oh my god this is horrible you know and that's how i fish that depth because although i haven't had as much success as i as i once had um 
I did catch, there were times where in that deep water on Lake George, I was catching huge, huge Lakers on, on the regular in that depth. So de it definitely works to fish, fish lake trout in anywhere from, you know, 20 feet yeah, to 150. Dead bait or live suckers? That I just use dead bait for the lake trout. I, I just, I, I was saying to him earlier, I'm just lazy. I want to know that when I'm fishing deep water, that's how I do it. I guess I should. I guess I should stand corrected because one of the things I also do is when I'm looking at my sonar, uh, do a lot of guys fish Lake George here? Probably, right? Yeah. And if you have sonar, when you're fishing Lake George, you ever notice when you're out there first, first light, um, have you ever noticed how much bait fish activity you have suspended on your fish finders? You're seeing all kinds of fish in that 20, 25 foot range. At that, I definitely put live, I definitely want live bait 25, 20 foot down for those lake trout. A lot of times you catch really nice lake trout doing that. And uh, a friend of mine 15 years ago was like, try, ever try a shiner, ever try a shiner or sucker 20 feet down in 150 feet of water? I was like, no. He's like, try it. And it was, definitely works. And then now that I have the, now that I have the sonar, I can see why it works, you know, because those bait fish are getting pushed up. You catch a lot of them right under the ice. I I don't like it when I do because that's usually when I'm salmon fishing. But yeah, <laughs> I've only ever caught one, and, and it was right under the ice, three feet live bait. I was actually pike fishing. Yeah, sunset, and he sent the tip up into the air. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I actually don't like catching lake trout when I'm salmon fishing, but that that's usually what happens. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were bored a few years ago trying to catch salmon, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, you, yeah. Now, now the game's changed. Like yeah, that. yep, yeah. It's going to be an exciting year. I know this fall was awesome. Um, it's going to be cool to see what, you know, last year you saw that, that huge salmon. Um, that was it almost 15 pounds that came out through the ice last year? It seemed like a northern, up north, it seemed like out of Hague. Or I don't even know. I didn't really, I think somewhere up there, yeah. Do you, do you feel that you need to get away from pressure, ice fishing pressure, to, to, to the salmon, do they get, you know, longer shy or? I believe, I was saying, I believe every single, everything about Lake George is all finesse. I honestly believe the water clarity is, th there are different species of fish, you know, they can just see better, they, they, they're more sensitive. I, a lot of guys use wheelers and they have their snowmobiles and their power augers. That's fine, and, and it definitely it definitely works for me. I I'm just like I take my sled and my and my hand auger or my electric auger, and I try to I try to go pretty uh, stealth. I, I look at it like with trophy fish. I look at it like I just try to surprise them. You know, a lot of times I feel like those fish are are in an area for a reason and if you're in there making a bunch of noise and changing up the scenario it's, it's going to push fish out for sure especially the smarter and bigger fish that's i see that with walleye fishing you know i don't there's certain species i see that with i don't really see that with lake trout too much i i do think it's salmon the walleye you know crappy um i definitely think i definitely think crappy or wicked intelligent fish i've actually watched them literally see my jig and run their back around my jig to see i i swear like you just tried to feel if there's a hook in that like <laughs> i really i think they're that smart i really do when the salmon you say you're close to shore does do you care if it drops off at 100 foot or if it drops off at you know more lightly do you rather the steep drop i want i want deep water around yeah close to the shore yeah deep water. yeah Absolutely, especially Lake George. They're pushing smelt and Cisco's out of the deep, right up against the shore. And the rock ledges. The rock ledges, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But again, you got to run the risk of that fish getting wrapped into that stuff too. So that's definitely. Um, I'm trying to think of anything as far as tip-up setups that you could talk about. That's that's pretty much my that's my deal on on pike lakers and salmon on lake george i love to i love to jig lakers i could spend all day doing that at that at which case the tip-ups i don't even bother with but i do use like i said i definitely do use i'm really big on a deg on these dead stick rigs with live bait or dead bait somewhere next to my next to my jig if i start finding fish 
and this will this will bring in those lake trout and sometimes they won't smack your jigs but they'll hit your um your bait you find that you, you're catching smaller fish with the jigs um i think i find no no i think no i think i have a pretty even i think it's just a matter of what fish you're on you know i definitely know i don't think so because i think um when i'm fishing really deep i i think i do really good with the bigger fish on, in the midwinter on on jigs um bigger fish are not as aggressive or they need a little more coaxing as where you know you can just I, by a smaller fish. i think when you catch a bigger fish he's aggressive does that make sense okay. <laughs> so essentially you're when you're fishing for that big lake trout and you see a fish on your finder and you're reeling up and he's chasing you and he smacks it it's because that big fish was out looking for a meal maybe there's not as many big fish and the problem with lake george is people don't think about how long it takes an eight pound lake trout to get to be eight pounds and they'll keep it because it's potentially maybe the biggest laker they've ever caught but i i almost think in my two cents is i think there should be a, sl a slot a slot limit on on lake trout i think you should be able to keep the young ones and 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 uh keep that mid-range fish in the lake and then maybe take out a couple trophy fish on, on the other end 20 to 3 to 26 you're all right keeping yeah and then that's my personal that's what i do yeah. yep that's my and Colorado, we were fishing a reservoir, and they would do 22 to 34 inches. Yeah. Everything in between, like, dip it back. Yeah. That, the that's how I believe it should be. That's how I believe it should be, because I think when you take those eight, nine pound fish out, you're never going to catch those 15, 20 pound fish. I used to honestly have spots on the lake where I honestly would catch a 14 to 18 pound lake trout almost every time I went, and I'd always throw it back. And then guys find out about that. And they keep those fish. They're they're taking them another ten years, fifteen years to get that big. Do you feel that the salmon are going to be able to strike a tip up, fight, and then be released and survive? And survive. If you're handling them nicely, because you're not you're not worrying about them going into super deep water. But they're great tasting fish. Yeah, eighteen inches long. You're yeah, I'm keeping my salmon that I catch. A, they're stocked. They're not going to live that long. B, they only have a short lifespan. They do. Yeah. yeah. So they're not the ones they have in here. They're right. they're 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 only good. I I don't know the specific. I'm not a biologist, but they're only good for like four, five, six years. Those fish, but they're rapidly growing. Nice. I mean, there are thirty. There are a good population of thirty inch fish in that lake right now, the swimming around. Is unbelievable. What? The the is unbelievable. That and they mod they genetically mod. We're eating. We're catching GMO salmon. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. They're genetically modified salmon, for sure. And they're getting big fast. <laughs> Which I'm fine with. <laughs> and they keep putting them in, right? Oh, yeah. And they, they, they're a little bit bigger as they put them in. I don't know. I I have a friend of mine who would know better. I think they still put them in pretty small, and I think they're growing super fast. Okay. What's the keeper length on them? Uh, 20, was 18? 18. 18? 18 on, on salmon? Uh, I've been thinking about deer hunting a lot. It's either 18 or 21. I think it's 18. I'm sure I'll get made fun of for that, but I'm pretty sure it's 18. It's 15 pretty much on most of your other lakes, like screwing and everything, and I think it's 18 on Lake George. Don't quote me on that. Check the book. <laughs> pretty soon, smelt are going to be legal in the lake, but not right now, so don't use those. But definitely keep your eye on the regulation books because that is in the works for sure. I did talk to my friends at um, you jig up a Cisco game on yeah yeah it's game on big time is that just luck of the draw or you target them myself I do target them I definitely target you them you can weed out a 150 perch to, to get to that Cisco or you're, you're in a whole different area I'm in a whole different ball game and I'm targeting just Cisco's and do you try to do that over a weed bed or do you try to do that over <laughs> <laughs> look for a depth <laughs> You're going to have to take me out to dinner for that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, Cisco, is your, they're in deep water. They're uh, deep water. They're like deep water perch fishing. You got to have a lot of patience, and you got to you gotta know spots, you know? But I don't recommend anybody do that. <laughs> You're totally wasting your time. Don't bother. It's, it's a bad idea. So what else do you guys want to talk about?
quick, get off the Cisco subject. And, 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 Cisco, they're, and they're, they're big and you leave it whole. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And I always, I, I love fishing. I love eating fish and I, I do perch fish a ton and I love all, all my fish. I fish for anything that swims, but I, there's something about watching a, 48 inch fish come out of a hole through the lake that's just like ah you know just i it's just like a that wonderful and you try to you know, with the, with the i i use i use um if it's something really big i uh, i will gaff it gaff it but i will i will be really really careful to gaff it in the mouth, mouth well. and, and i and i'll release it and it'll be fine yeah so what where are we at so we'll wrap it up with some final questions. Anybody got them? What's your preferred uh, jigs for uh, lake trout? Yeah. You know what? I'm glad you said that. So I just found everybody uses buckshots. We all we all like those, right? You know, these are great lures for jigging lake trout. Really quick on that. These are this is smelt oil. This stuff is gulp marinade really really good stuff i love it That's good for anything. yeah i really love this i've, I've noticed I've, I've done like you use this you i've had guys you know i'll just put this on my jig and we'll have the same jig it, they like it it's a lake trout what is it, it's um it's gulp marinade uh shad it's meant for soaking your plastics in but it, it works it, great on live bait it works great on yeah i don't know i have also um Love tube tube fishing for Lakers. Um, you're getting a you're getting a much more of a finesse on your drop with that tube. It's a, it, it's a certain it's a certain style of fishing. These light tubes. Jake yeah, Jake hats. Yep. Um, one thing that's awesome is I was happy to see that he had these, and I'm I'm gonna take these home with me. Is um, bucktails, white bucktails. Old fashioned, the guy's been doing it forever. White bucktail with a nice fillet, fillet of a small sucker. You want to make sure that you hook it so that the skin is facing the bottom of the hook. So when it flips, it doesn't get caught up on the on the hook when you're jigging it. Works awesome. Jigging bucktails for Lakers spoons, Swedish pimples. Really good colors for Lake George. On for me has always been green. So, um, green's a really good color. White's a really good color. Uh, Gulp down. What were you going to show? I use, I use, um, these, I, I, I sometimes use plastics on my, on my jigs. And these, uh, these are actually, I use a bigger version of these, but these are the only ones I could find, but these work awesome. They look a lot like smelt and they work really good. Um, I use long rods when I jig on Lake George cause you're, I'll, I'll work a, a really long rod because I'm, I'm always kind of working the water column and I'll uh, I, I don't I don't fish in a clam for Lakers so I don't fish in any sort of shelter I'm always I'm always standing up because I'm just trying to work that water column constantly looking at your fish finder you can learn so much by just watching how those fish react to your finder it's incredible you I I it's like almost renewed my whole love for fishing and jigging Lakers Lakers was getting a good fish finder it just turned me on to, I learned so much about how these fish are reacting. And you would think you'd sit there out on the ice and catch one or two and you'd be like, you know, you'd see that these fish are coming through looking at your jig and they're not hitting. And then you're seeing, you, you're getting them to actually chase your bait from 80 feet to 40 before they strike. And it's just the finders like, you're like, there it is, there it is. It's falling, it's chasing, it's chasing, chasing. Oh, it dropped off. And then, you know, and you just learn so much. You can find out they really don't like this jig today. And then you try another one. You're like, yep, they're hitting it hard. So essential to have a good finder to gain knowledge on, on ice fishing, I think. I think I think it's going to be a good year. I know that. we got hopefully some good ice on Lake George. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a pretty good week. <laughs> it was fast. So I hope you guys, you know, if you have any questions, you can always ask me, you know, after the class or whatever, after the, I'm always happy to talk ice fishing. So hope you guys have good luck this year. It's going to be cool. I'm excited about the salmon though. So yeah, that's probably what I'll be fishing for. <laughs> good luck guys. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks. That's good.
with the trip. <laughs>